Hey everybody, welcome back. And if you're new, thanks for stopping by. So, I've had a lot of questions since I uploaded the video on my uh, ARGB strips being controlled by my computer and how I made those strips. Well, today I'm going to give you a little tutorial and I hope this helps you make your own cables. It's fairly simple and we'll get to that here in just a second. And we'll be taking them from this to this. So you might wonder what you're going to need for this. Well, obviously you'll need your RGB or ARGB strips, which are addressable RGB. The brand I used, and I do believe I shared last time, was the Alitov addressable LED strip. And as you can see, it's great for DIY. I actually really like these. Really easy to cut, make your own custom size, solder, and they stick pretty well. I did have to use some tape on the back of my TV because a couple of them had some subsidence. But since then, no issues. They're still there. Haven't fallen anymore. Now, when you do buy strips, if you don't get this brand, if you are using your IQ controller, you'll need the WS2812B. And just make sure you get that because if you get a different one, it might not work with IQ. Actually, I'm fairly positive it won't. Um, from my understanding, this is the uh, type you need for any addressable controller. However, double check with your manufacturer just to be sure. I don't want you to have any issues or they don't work. But today we're going to do this for an IQ controller, the Lighting Node Pro. And yeah, so that's one thing you need, obviously. Next, you'll obviously need a soldering iron. You don't need anything fancy like this. If you have a regular soldering iron, it should do the trick. And then solder, of course. I use leaded solder because non-leaded solder I'm not a fan of. We'll just put it that way. I want to use other words, but we'll get out of that. Also, make sure you got a solder sucker. Just in case you get a big blob on there, you can get down in there, heat it up, and suck it up. Get it out of your way. In addition to that, I have this adapter, which takes an a IQ connector and converts it to an ARGB strip. So... They have the three prongs. The regular RGB has four here. It has four holes down here. And this one actually has... Oh, no, sorry. This isn't the one. But yeah, you have the three holes here. And you always want to follow the arrows. You have the two next to the arrow and then one down here. But to make sure you get them right, bring a multimeter. If you don't have a multimeter, I would test, test, test. And touch the connector there because if you get them wrong these get really hot and will melt so and another thing i bought are these splitters and we're not going to be splitting anything i actually bought these so i can cut off the ends it's much cheaper than buying a whole cable and splitting it in half because you can get these in multiple bands up here three four five i've seen uh, this one's just a two. Obviously, I haven't cut it because all the other ones had more strands on them. And I used this previously for a different LED setup. But get yourself some of those. I'll link those down below. Um, next, you'll probably want some little clamps just so when you're doing the soldering on the wires, it makes it a little easier because sometimes these like to flop around. Or get yourself something to set this on, put something heavy on top of it and hang this over the edge so you don't have to hold this while you're trying to put the wire in, solder, and get solder in there. Yeah, you really need three hands sometimes, but the clamps do help in other objects. And lastly here, I misplaced it. Ah, yes. Some cable, and you don't need any fancy cable. I'm actually using some Cat5 Ethernet cable because you can do power over Ethernet and these are only 5 volts. So 
this won't overload this cable, make it hot or anything. Um, but this is what I use to basically take one uh, corner and connect it to another one. Because you know these don't go around corners very well. So you're going to have to make a wire to connect from here to here. And I'll be going through all this here. But I just wanted to go over the materials you needed. And let's get into it. When you get your cable out of the uh, Alto package, the ends are going to look like this. You're going to have your connector. You're going to have the power, which... I will explain how this works, and likely you won't need it, um, just because it, it, there's reasons. But anyway, you'll see they look like this. Um, one end's going to have this connector and this. This is so if you had multiple of those strands, didn't modify them in any way, you could just cut them here. But honestly, we're not going to use these connectors. We're just going to pop them off. Um, and I'm not going to use the power, but I will show you how this works just in case you decide to do that. Um, I don't really recommend it, but let's get into getting these prepared and make us some ARGB cables. I forgot to mention one thing while I was going through all this. I need some wire strippers. Get some better ones than me. These aren't great, but you will need to strip the wires. Um, some of mine just do with my hand because they're so tiny and you'll see me do it throughout but I did forget to mention that so don't forget these so back to business first up what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take our connector off here actually I should probably go with the other end it doesn't really matter you just got to make sure you get the ground and the 5 volt correct and the middle one correct so taking a look at the connector here, you'll see that it has an arrow on it. That is so you can line it up to your other connector and make sure you're plugging them in correctly. I mean, it's pretty hard with the ARGB, but showing you here, starting with the arrow side, that first one is the 5 volt. The middle one is the controller wire, and the one all singled out by itself is the ground there. So just keep that in mind. So just make sure you get that correct so when you plug these together, they match up here and you don't have any overheating issues because so i have gotten these backwards these will get hot and melt luckily i caught it because the lights didn't work right they're doing some crazy stuff so just make sure to always solder them to get them that way but we're going to get into this i'm going to strip this strip the wires cut this and strip these As you can see, if you do get the ones that have the four wires, you end up with four wires in here. So just make sure, like I said, test, test, test to make sure what is coming out of here. And we're going to go test these and make sure we get the 5 volt and ground correct. And then we know which one we can connect to the green wire here. For some reason, I decided not to talk while I was stripping the wires, but that is what I'm doing currently with my fingernails. Yes, I'm using my fingernails, but that is because I currently don't have wire strippers that will strip that small of wire, so I'm left to do that. But once you strip them, twist the ends around there, make sure you don't have any frayed ends because when you go to tin the wires with the solder, you don't want them to be all frayed out and then it just makes a mess. So you want to be nice and straight because it'll work way better here. All right, now that that's all stripped and we have the wires exposed on the end, let's bring over our multimeter. Now, I have my little clamp here connected because it makes this a heck of a lot easier. Because all you got to do is clamp down on one of these wires and then you check continuity across here and then I suggest you first do that or uh, solder that one and then you can go down I, I believe the blue is the one you don't use I'm not sure 
but we'll we'll figure that out. We'll start with the blue wire. Now make sure you don't touch any of the other ones because then, oh yes, measuring for continuity. So let's get that in there. Your multimeter might be a little different, but just checking for continuity here. Nope, nope, nope. So this one is our singled out one. So we will be using the blue and make sure we get it know that it's here so keep the blue there now we will check the green okay green is going to be our middle one so blue green and i believe it's black now that we got that let's check black like I said, make sure these don't touch down here, or you might get a false read. So, just pro, and there we go. Black goes right here to the arrow. So, black, green, blue. Your wires may have different colors, so, like I said, check, check, check. Now, let's get into the soldering. Well, we actually need to cut off the end here, strip those, double check what these are, and then we can make it our connector for the wire here. And I will connect two of these strips together just to give you an idea, and then I'll go over how I did my power for this. So let's get this one created, and then we'll move on. Also, keep the multimeter nearby because sometimes, if you're like me, you might forget what they were. Just a reminder, the pinout on this, when you're looking at the arrow, if y'all can see that, there you go, the arrow's here. So you have the, I'm gonna get a better one to show y'all that only has the three. So arrow, like always, has the two. So ground, this is the controller wire, and then your five volt. So. 5 volt and ground are on the outside, and then your green one there goes to the middle, because these are pretty straightforward. Black is ground, red is positive, and then controller wire in the middle. So, let's cut this, and get our other cable here, get it all hooked up, cut the unnecessary one off, and then be good to go. Ooh, also, forgot to mention... probably going to want to get some shrink tubing to cover up the exposed wires. If you don't have it, use electrical tape. I use this, get my heat gun out and heat it up. Um, I believe even if you get a really hot hair dryer, you can shrink these down. Or you can do it the cheap way and just dab it with your soldering iron. Just be very careful not to hold it there and you just burn them off. Um, you got to do it real quick or hover over it and just kind of go back and forth while you rotate around. Um, I'll try to show you that if I remember, but I'm going to pull some of these out so we can get them over each individual strip here when we're connecting. And so that way none of these are exposed. So one here. What I do is I... Stick this guy on first because you want to make sure you get your shrink tubing on before anything or you're going to have a really bad time. So shrink tubing is on there. Just leave it down on the end. Try not to let things get too hot or this could be an issue. So I'm not going to do it yet, but I was just putting a friendly reminder. So we'll leave those up there. Um, we're going to double check our connections, cut that and go. So this should be here. Yep. So green goes to green. I believe blue is our ground, if I remember correctly. Yep. And black is power. All sorts of weird colors for this. So let's chop the red one down. There's some little wire cutters here. I'm just going to snip off the red. 
because we don't need that. So there's our three cables, power, ground, middle. So I'm going to set them like that so we know how they should look. Now we need to tin them up, so let's do that. I'm going to set this guy over my cables here because as you can see, they don't want to cooperate. And this will kind of help make them cooperate. First things first, let's tin up our wires here. Yes, I have my thing on a little spool. I need to treat this because this is a new head, so I need to fix that. This one should be good to tin, and that one. So twist these up real good. So we don't have any weird issues. Oh, I messed up. That should be good. We're all through still. So, get my solder out. There they are. Let's tin these up. Alright, as you can see, I just kind of put the soldering iron behind, a little solder on it, and just kind of drag it up towards the top. That first one I did pretty perfectly. Don't always get that on the first try. So there's two tinned up. Let's get the middle wire there. Let's tin these up a bit. Boom. And now these wires are all tinned up. Now is when you should put them together. Just blow on them a little bit. Make sure they're not hot. Do this. Stick them all through. And then we'll just keep that guy down there. So separate these out for now. Put it aside. And cut our cable here. Now you can cut this off further if you want. You can even go to the edge, pull it out, stick your wires in there. I, I'm more of, I like to have this pretty solidly set up. So, just cut that off. We can get rid of that. And then just separate out your wires. Bring over your strippers. These ones aren't pre-tinned. Don't be fooled. Alright. Now, get these on there. Just twist them around, make sure they're not have any stray wires. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I know you're still on. That's the multimeter yelling at me. I'll turn that off. All right, so we got these. Now we need to tin these. Now, you can see this one wants to be a little, little crazy, so we'll just put some tools on it. There we go. Twist around those again just to be sure. Like so. So they're kind of floating there. Alright, tin these up. These are going to be a little harder to tell because they're silver wires. They're probably steel or something. Alright, you can tell when you get the solder on there because they'll get shiny. But fairly simple. Tin them up. Alright, and there we go. Those are tinned up. Okie dokie. So let's get our cables together. First up, get a little solder on there. And let's do ground first. So. Get your wire as straight as you can. Put them together. Try not to get any excess solder on there. And a little extra. Boom. There 
go. Our ground is connected. Good to go there. Next, let's get our centerpiece in. As you can see, it wants to float. If these do start to try and float, you're just going to have to kind of work the wires around. This is where this comes in handy to hold things. Alright. Next one's connected. And then finally, our power cable. And like I said, make sure they're straight. You don't really want to deviate. Make them crooked. I need to get some more solder. There's our connections. So, before I go and heat these shut, we're gonna check continuity again. So remember ground, controller, five volt. So ground, controller, five volt. So ground is our single. So we'll be testing that first. So let's bring back the multimeter. Put it on continuity. And we can just connect like so. So we'll check 5 volt first. I know I'm kind of hovering here, but I didn't want to unravel that wire. So here we go. So 5 volt here is our one with the arrow. We're good there. Let's check the controller wire. So... A little more difficult to not touch them here, so it should be this one. Yep. And then our ground. Yep. All right, perfect. Now let's get all the wires covered up here and turn on our heat gun. So. Make sure not to get this one yet, so maybe go at an angle here. Just kind of heat these up. And you'll, you'll see them shrink. So, we got those heated up. They're shrinking on. And we'll help prevent any shorts. Sorry about that, I bumped that with my hat. All right. Now, I'm going to turn that this way because I don't want that pointing at the power strip, but these are all on there snug. We'll give it a minute for it to cool before we heat that guy up. Here you go. They're all shrunk on there. It prevents us from having any shorts. Now, just to make things look a little pretty, I like to go like this. So, here's this. Bring our other cable over, or our shrink tubing and bring it over here and try and make this a little better looking I know it doesn't look that great but if we really try hard we can get it stick in there like that so there's that heat it up Shrink it down. Sometimes you can rotate just to be sure. And then there we are. All right, so our connector is ready to connect to the computer for this strip. Uh, not lobbing those off. I will be lobbing those off, but like I said, I'll go over that in just a few minutes here on why or why not or why, why you shouldn't use those. So let's uh, cut this right here. You can cut it down to any size along these copper uh, pads here. So we're only gonna cut off the end one. As you can see, there's not any copper pads on the end, so it'd be kind of useless. So we'll just say that one LED can live his own life. So 
I like to use scissors for this. And there's a nice little line there you can follow. And you just snip it off there. And now we got our end to connect our wires to. So, like I said, when you connect these, you can use Ethernet cable since it's only 5 volts of power. I have one cut here, and you know there's multiple cables in here. There's about, uh, there's eight in here on an Ethernet cable. So you got orange, orange, white, blue, blue, white stripe, or white, blue stripe, uh, brown, brown, white, green, green, white. I'm going to use the blue, orange, and brown wires today, so all the other wires I can just take, snip off, and not have to worry about them, so we'll get rid of those on both ends here. And I'll do a better job in a bit, but that's all we need. Move all that out of the way. We don't need all this in our way. So, now we got our cables. This one, you can obviously tell I've used once before. However, we're just going to reuse it because I'm no longer using it. I actually was using this cable specifically to inject power into the strip. So, we'll, again, we'll get to that in just a second. <laughs> Alright. So, obviously going to need to strip ourselves some ends off here and if you notice these are solid but you should be able to use them for this I used them multiple times so stripping off our ends here I have fingernails so I can do this they're fairly easy if you don't but that's what we're going to use. Now, we also need another cable. So, we're going to get our other cable. As you can see, it already has 10, or uh, I've already tinned the ends here. But I'm going to tin those up first, and then this will make it a little easier on me. So, let me get these all tinned up, and we'll get this connected. We are going to need some more shrink tube. We're going to need these so, so they could just fit over there. So we'll stick that again over our cable here. Put it as far down. And then we'll get these connected. Now, use brown as the ground, or uh, 5 volts, sorry. The orange as the middle, and then blue as ground. So. And the good thing is, if you don't cover these up immediately, you can just reference what you did on the previous one. So, let's get these put on, and we're almost done. I mean, it might take you longer, because you might do, like, you know, several of these like I did behind my TV and desk. But, once you do one or two, it's real easy. So, just a little solder on that end. in there. All right, that's solid. All right, let's get that guy on there. Just push her down. Make sure that's not touching. It's not, so we're good there. If it was, I'd pull it off and just trim that a bit, which I'm gonna do on this one, just to be safe. Let's just take this. Just 
trim off a little piece here. There we go. And that way it's not going to bridge anything we don't want it to. So now we get the blue one tucked in there. connected so that's all connected now let me bring the other end around and get that one going let me tin these up it does want to flop around so give me one second all right there we are so here's a close-up of how I do that let's get a little solder on there Bring it up to the top. And now we're all shiny. Do the same thing here. And last but not least. Ooh. And that's what I was talking about. If you get too big of a blob, you can use a sucker. But I was able to get it off with just the iron. Cool. We're tinned up here. So all those are squared away. So let's get them connected to our other strip here. Now, remember, brown is five volt, blue is ground. And we can always come back over here and just check. Ground is blue, brown is five volt. So there's our new cable here. I'm gonna wedge it down with some pliers there just to hold it in place while we do all the soldering. And again, a little bit of solder on the end here. Let's bring down our ground. And it looks like I need a little more solder on these. So let's add a little more. There we go. Just put some fresh on top. Perfect. Now we can do this. So I'm going to make sure this is straight. Oh, thanks for reminding me. We need to put our other end on. Our other shrink tube. So that way nothing is exposed. We'll just put that down at the far end there for now. So, all right, time to connect to the solder. on there. Don't have a whole lot of things to work with here or area but should be okay. And there we are. That is two cables connected together. Repeat the process and this is what you'll get. But let me get the shrink tubing on there. We'll zoom out and then show you what we got. Boom, nice zoom out there. So here's our two cables connected. We have our ARGB end uh, connector here. I still need to tin off that one just to remind us to block it. But again, if you follow the arrow, it's uh, power, controller, blank, ground. Power, controller, blank, ground. Let's get our shrink tubing over so we don't have these exposed takes a little finagling with these ones because I got size that's just barely big enough but it should do the trick alright there's that one Pushing a little more on this side. It doesn't want to cooperate totally. It may have shrunk a little. But once we shrink it all the way out, it should be good. Need to turn on my uh, gun here. So again, shrink tubing. Take it, slide it over. Pinch as far as you can down while you're pushing it forward. I know easier said than done. 
And you should be able to get these all covered. There's one. And two. Now we have our strip. We have it all set up to plug into the computer. But I know a lot of you are probably wondering why you would need this power. Well, personally, I don't. I used to use this, and it does work, but um, IQ, Lighting Node Pros, the Commander Pro, all the, all the controllers that IQ makes tend to only be able to control, I mean, they can control more, but usually about 120 LEDs per port on one of those, the Lighting Node or the Commander, is the best bet, because once you go over that, the colors start to fade, the whites turn yellow, and things start to not look right. Um, sometimes it'll affect 50% of the strip, sometimes it'll just affect the whole strip, and if you have way too many it won't work at all because 5 volts isn't really going to get you through here. So these are to inject power halfway through, so it's a 5 volt system, so if you had like a old... Uh, uh, Olex. Power connector, you know, it has the 12, the ground, and a 5 and a ground. Well, you can take that 5 and a ground, and I'll show you that here. So you can take the 5 volt out of that one and actually connect it to your power here and the ground on that side and make your own custom wire, kind of like the Ethernet cable. You can do the same thing. Um, and inject power to the line after 120 LEDs. Again, I personally don't prefer it. It really didn't look good. The, like I said, the colors start getting distorted and not fun. But this is the way I do it. So these are useless to me. I'm not going to lob these off just in case it, ever in the future I want to use them but I'm not making more LED strips. Maybe I'll try to hook these up to something else. Um, but yeah, so now that we are all set there, we can take our cable that we got from Pirate Dog Tech, and this will be what we plug in inside the computer. But as you can see, now our strips connect together and this makes a quick disconnect on the back of your computer so let's go test this out we're not going to use this I already have some on the back of my computer so we'll just go over there test these out make sure the strip works and then that should be good to go to control with your computer all right as you can see we're back inside in the AC and we're looking at the side of my Corsair PC. So here's one of my Lighting Node Pros. I have another one off the side of the screen you can't see here. But this is what I have one of those adapters. I'll put it up on screen again here. But it goes from here, out here. And if you can see when I pull on it, it just disconnected this guy. So this guy, and I'll try to zoom in here. Zoom up. As you can see, there's our connector, and that's just so if I had to move the PC or do anything, I don't have to really worry about that and having to move all the wires. So let's bring our new cable over. As you can see, here it is. Our arrows are on the bottom side, two there, and then we'll double check that the cable works. And voila, we got light. And it's really bright. I'm sorry about that, but our cable we just made is working. And there you have it. I know that took a little long, but this was kind of a technical video, more technical than my last ones, and wanted to go into as much detail as possible. So if you are looking to make your own custom ARGB strips to control with IQ, just follow those steps and you should be golden. 
if you have any questions or maybe I missed something, please let me know below. I'll answer as fast as possible. Also, if you can click those buttons down below, I'd really appreciate it as it helps me out. I thank you for stopping by today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and take care.